Topic for today's Lex Chat. I recently had a show at Believe Music Hall through Bridging the Music for the Mini Fest in Atlanta. That, um, that music show was Thursday, May 19th. And it was, I went on at about 9.30, 9.40. And that is the basis of inspiration for today's Lex chat because I need to brag my brother and his and his wife, my new sister, they came all the way from Texas and coordinated their schedule to come see me perform. And he told me that is specifically why they came. And so I've always struggled with myself. Um, I think it has to do with certain things in my childhood that makes me question whether anybody will basically like show up for me when it comes to these shows, especially. I grew up an army brat, but I also for a time grew up with a single mom. And because of the work hours of the military and because of the pressures of being a single parent, I think, and just because my parents were like seemingly always working I was thinking about this the other day too. I might have been more poor than I realized as a kid. <laughs> but um, because of the military and because I did stay with my mom for a while, she was a single mom, you know, my parents were always working basically. And how that affected me as a kid is even though I was involved in sports and, <clears throat> excuse me, even though I was involved in sports and like music recitals or dance recitals, because they were always working or because they were tired from work and you know likely had a lot of pressure, no one ever really came to the games or the dance recitals or things of that nature. So I think that's manifested in my life, in my adult life, as I never expect anyone to come out to see me because I didn't quite have that growing up as a kid. Even though I do remember a time where I told my parents that it was okay that they don't come to the games, because I thought I would be too embarrassed having them there. Like, you know, back then I was embarrassed that, you know, our team might lose the game or I might not play that well because I might not be the best player. And those are those kinds of thoughts back then. But, you know, I, I guess I still wanted them to come to the game, even if it was in secret, you know, but I didn't have that kind of connection with my parents. And I think it's just because they were always working. Military got weird hours, you know, by the time they get off, they got to have dinner. They got to have the house together. They want to rest for themselves. So I cannot fault my parents or my family for not being involved because they were taking care of business. They were handling things. And so Jay for Silk says, you know, I'm a fan, very talented. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that very much. I really do. So the inspiration for today's Lex chat is just talking about how I have been receiving a lot of unexpected support lately and it's really fueling me. So there are a few things that have been happening. But first off, um, that is the topic of the Lex chat and that if that is something that you are interested in hearing more about and you want to hear more on the conversation, then definitely stay tuned. Let's hear from some sponsors, some advertisements. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome to the Lex Chat, Q Dog. Welcome, welcome. So, um, I think what's been happening lately is a combination of things. Welcome to the Lex Chat, Sean. Welcome, welcome. So, a combination of things have been happening. If you remember the Lex Chat that I did a couple of weeks ago, and we actually skipped last week because I was lazy and too much happened. Actually, I think I've missed like two weeks of Lex Chats now. I apologize for the inconsistency, but if you saw the last Lex chat, which I believe is titled Do All the Shows, I was kind of reflecting on how we as artists and really anybody in any industry, we need to make sure that we're, we're keeping our mentality in check and we need to make sure that we are 
being realistic about where we are in our career and what's normal for our career as far as progress and what's what's normal to be feeling but we have to be sure to put things into perspective basically welcome to the lex chat cool as now welcome 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 so what that last show is all about lex chat do all the shows it was basically me giving a reminder to you but also a reminder to myself that from the moment you started doing the thing that you said you wanted to do you became the thing that you said you wanted to be welcome to the lex chat gray keys welcome welcome and that whole episode lex chat do all the shows it's basically from the moment i started singing i became a singer now where we get messed up is we believe that we should be the best we should be the biggest we should be on the biggest stage we should make the most money we should get the most endorsements we should look the best we should have the best all of these things but and i think what messes us up as well is the fact that social media has warped our understanding of how timeline works our understanding of how quickly things do not happen it warps our understanding of just how much time it takes to build things we are living in an era where everybody wants instant gratification and we're living in a time where everyone believes that everything is supposed to happen like this that's not the truth though things do not happen like this they never have there is literally a process to everything and that is the basis of the lex chat do all the shows so when it relates to as it relates to how we all are when it comes to our passions or our careers as a singer from the moment i started singing i became a singer but i started here right i started because i just decided to become that I'm looking at I want to be Beyonce, I want to be Destiny's Child, I want to be Tamia, I want to be Monica, I want to be Alia, I want to be Alicia Keys. All of these different influences, but they're up here. I want to be up here, but I'm forgetting that I just started. I'm right here. They've already got years and interviews and experience and training and investment. All that's how they got up here. So that's where we have to keep ourselves in check, right? From the moment I started singing, I'm a singer, but I need to keep singing. I need to keep getting better. I need to keep investing. I don't know how many years that's going to take. I don't know how much money of how much money it's going to take for me to uh invest, but I know I got to keep investing. I got to do all the shows. If I never do any of the shows, then I'm not going to be better at my stage presence. I'm not going to be better at singing live. I'm not going to be better at relating to a live audience or getting crowd participation. I'm not going to get better with my anxiety or my nerves, so I have to keep doing stage uh performances. And basically, welcome to the Lex chat, Maurice. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Cool ass now says preach and some gratification. Yeah, so so basically the point of that whole Lex chat is you have to do all the shows and you have to make sure you keep it straight in your head that it is an amazing thing that you get to do these shows at all. And if you were invited to do a show, especially if you're an artist and you don't have to pay for it, like you were invited, but you don't have to pay, that's an amazing thing because that means somebody wants you to be there. And that's the feeling that we want to accomplish. That is the goal that we want to accomplish. Granted, it's on a smaller scale, but it's still on the scale. It's up to you to keep doing these things to add more to your scale, to add more to your plate, to add more to your table. And the comparisons just go on and on, right? But if you never start with the small the small shows, if you never start with your plate, how can you fill the table? If you never start with your your sides, how can you finish what's on the plate? You know what I mean? So basically, you're not going to get better unless you keep practicing the thing that you say you want to do. And doing the thing that you say you want to do even on a small scale is still doing the thing that you say you want to do. So welcome to the lex Te welcome to the lex chat tammy j welcome 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 so basically with that chat right and i'm going to keep saying that because i tend to be long-winded but you got to do all the shows the ones that are unorganized the ones that are ghetto the ones where there are 20 other artists performing one or two songs and all of you probably paid 20 to 100 dollars to be there or if you were invited but the show doesn't start they told you to be there at nine o'clock. They didn't start the show until midnight. 
and you got 20 artists to get through and it's going to be over not until 3 a.m but you have to go through those experiences you need those defining moments you need those situations where you're you're feeling frustrated but you also have to appreciate those experiences for what they are because even though it's not on the scale you want it to be it is preparing you for when you do get to a higher level assuming that you are consistently working to get to the higher level and we also have to make sure that we remember that getting to a higher level and becoming the best that does not mean that you somehow magically don't have to do more you're not trading one thing for another you're getting really good at doing some things and then once you're really good at doing some things you're adding more things and then once you're good at those things and more things that you added you're adding even more things so the things that you're good that good at the things that you added and even more things you add even even more you know what i'm saying like the work never gets easier the load never gets lighter your problems do not become smaller you actually just get better and better at managing more problems, bigger problems, more complex problems. Welcome to the Lex chat, Asia. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Lex chat, little bro. Welcome, welcome. So as I was saying earlier, if you're just coming into the chat, the inspiration for this week's Lex chat is the fact that, you know, this is a combination of things that have happened that have made me feel very grateful. And that mindset bringing my mindset into perspective has really helped me a lot as far as realizing that every show I do is important. Everything that I'm a part of is important and how I show up to all of the things that I am invited to or how I show up to all of the things I decide to participate in, that is going to be very, very important to how I will be able to show up and maintain once I get to this higher level that I want to be on. But you got to be ready for the higher level. You got to get stronger. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're not getting rid of problems or trading problems in. You're getting more problems. You're getting more stuff. It's more things to manage, more things to be mindful of. So there's that thing that happened, right? So that's me feeling grateful for changing my mindset and then it seemed like as soon as i did that welcome to the lex chat lcp music well yay what up what up welcome to the lex chat the real eyes welcome welcome what up what up so once i realized that it's like i was able to actually enjoy the show at believe music hall um and what helped me even more to feel even more grateful for the mindset shift and <sighs> just for the opportunity to do the show. Even though the audience wasn't that big, even though, you know, it probably, it could have been marketed better by the organizers, but the venue was beautiful. The stage was bigger than I was used to being on, like height wise. The stage was actually quite small. It was probably like two, three feet wide, but my name was in lights. They got the big LED screen behind me. Literally my name Lexi is on the stage and I'm dancing in front of a huge LED screen. So despite all of those things, because at this point I'm, I kind of know what to expect and I'm just grateful for anyone who did show up. But the best thing that happened is my brother and my new sister coming all the way from Texas just to see me perform. And he bought tickets a week before the show. Do you know I have been advertising this show for gosh, at least six weeks. Yeah, I want to say probably two months that I've been advertising. One, two, three. Probably, I'll say at least a month because I'm not even really sure on the timeline. But I've been advertising this show every single day for, for at least a month, for four to six weeks. Um, I did have to pay a little fee to be on the show, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> My point is... I made advertisement videos, I got merchandise together, I got wristbands. Like for those of you who have been on here, welcome to the Lex Chat, Prashant Pasti. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Lex Chat. But I have been advertising for weeks. I every single day I put up the flyer or the advertising video letting y'all know that the show was gonna happen and then I need y'all to buy tickets. 
and I need y'all to buy them online because that's what's gonna help me get paid. And I have to hit a certain ticket number for me to get paid for this show. Unfortunately, I did not hit the ticket number. So I actually lost a lot of money on this show. But again, I'm grateful for the experience of being able to perform in that venue. And in the grand scheme of things, it costs a lot less for me to pay that fee than it would if I like rented it out myself and did, you know, just a whole show by myself, you know? So I'm very grateful for that. But yes, my brother and my sister came all the way from Texas and it really just helps to reaffirm a lot of things in my mind because, um, and I, I told him this while they were here, he, and he said something that triggered me as well. He said, you don't, uh, you don't know how much I support you, do you? And I thought back to myself and I said, I said out loud, I, I guess I don't, I guess I don't know how much you support me. And then inside I'm thinking to myself, damn, how much <clears throat> does my brother support me? He knows all the songs. He knows the words to the songs. He said something after the thing. He was like, there was one song you performed that I never heard before. And I, I didn't know the words because I hadn't heard it before. I was like, oh, yeah, I haven't released that one yet. <laughs> That's why you haven't heard it. He's like, oh, OK. And he was like, I don't know if it's because I knew what to expect for certain songs, but I could hear you clearly. Everything sounded good. <laughs> I was like, damn, that's what's up. He knows the words to the song and he's knowing what to expect. So in my family, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to get my water. In my family, I've been singing ever since I was three years old. I just got my voice back a week ago. I should probably be taking it easy. But in my family, I've been singing since I was three years old, writing since I was eight. I became public with my talent at about fifth grade. Mm, no, I became public with my talent in seventh grade. That's when I officially recognized me wanting to share my talent with people. In seventh grade, I was living with my dad. I went to Live Oak Ridge Middle School in Colleen, Texas. And our house was right around the corner from the middle school. And I remember the memory clearly I was on the basketball team at the time and we were getting ready for a game. Was that the basketball? Yep, that was basketball season. I also did volleyball, but this was basketball season. And I sang, I was playing around and singing something. I was just feeling good. And I was singing a song by Cherish. Don't remember the name of it, but Rashida is in it. And I could tell you what song it is when I heard it. I'm a Chateau gangster, da, 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 da. East Coast Riders, da, 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 da. Midwest Hustlers, da, 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 da. we don't need no busters, da, 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 da. I need a salsa G, the ones with the uh, what I need, uh, 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 uh. chick like me, that's what it's called, uh, 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 a chick like me, a chick like me, and I hit this one note and it was like, Running cars upon that gangster lane. Imagine hitting that as a seventh grader as I was going out the locker room and everyone was like, yo, that was Lexi. They're like, well, they called me Alexis at that school. That's before I became Lexi. And they were like, like Alexis, we didn't know you could sing like that. And that's when people really like understood how well I could sing. The coaches started putting me on to sing the national anthem for the basketball games. And then when I got into high school, I started doing talent shows. I sang for a few basketball games in high school. I sang for a few baseball games, no, softball games. And then I got to sing for my high school graduation. That in itself is a dream come true. I still think about this one girl who had the nerve to think she was gonna sing at the graduation with me. A week before graduation, I'm like, girl, do you know how many months in advance they plan for stuff like this? I had done like a duet with her for one basketball game for the national anthem. It was terrible. Never again with that. But anyway, all of that to say, it wasn't until seventh grade that I made my talents public to my family. But I had been singing forever. And I think I was hiding it okay by singing like in the shower, of course, or in seventh grade, I spent a lot of time in the garage um, at my dad's house. 
and I thought I was you know, safe from the world in there. No one could hear me in the garage, right? All they would need to do is listen on the door. <laughs> but my logic was everybody's far away enough. They know I'm in here. They're not going to bother me. So this is my world. They had bought me a laptop. I got a keyboard that year. I had a piano ever since I was little because I did lessons when I was younger. But I got a, a keyboard that had different sounds on it. And then I got a laptop that had a built-in microphone. And then I researched where to get free beats from. It was soundclick.com. Excuse me. And then I researched how to record this stuff. Um, and I found the free program Audacity. And that's the first DAW that I ever used, the first digital audio workstation. Um, so in that way, <laughs> it's not the Sagittarius coming out. Maurice Beat says, I started producing at 11 years old. Hey, the real eyes says Sagittarius coming out. <laughs> but um, I guess when it comes to like my keyboard, right? That's the way that my dad did support me, kind of silently. Um, oh my gosh, she's so cute. She likes being loved on these days. I'm loving it. But yeah, um, and I actually recorded two albums in seventh grade and released them. 15 tracks a piece. I sold them for $5 a piece. Um, please don't. No, you're doing it anyway. Okay, goodbye. She don't want to be on camera loving me. It's fine. But yeah, I sold them for $5 a piece. Um, some teachers bought them. Some of my friends bought them. I think I might have sold like five albums, y'all. It's not that big of a deal. And I gave one to my friend who's, she said her dad was a music producer. And then I went to the studio with my brother's friend. So back then, maybe my dad has always been silently supportive. He never, he's Jamaican. Music is not a job for West Indies people. Um, but him buying the keyboard and unknowingly probably the laptop, which was probably supposed to be for school, but I use it for music mostly. Um, he probably silently was supporting me in that way. But I had um, my brother, one of my brothers, Kirk at the time, he was living with us. He told his friend that I could sing. And then I kind of auditioned for his friend and sang a hook for one of his songs. Um, but dad wouldn't let me go to the studio. Um, so that's something that just never sat right with me as I've gotten older. Like, why didn't he just let me go to the studio? But if he was thinking about how dark the music industry is, or if he was just thinking like, we're not gonna encourage this music thing, I don't know. But they would have encouraged piano. So I don't know. Maybe they were also upset that I stopped doing piano lessons. I don't know. It could be a few things. But yeah, my brother Kirk, he was trying to encourage me to get into music by recommending me to his friend. I'm like 11 or 12 at this point. And um, I was singing the way I was. He recognized my talent. And then he moved out, moved in with his girlfriend. Um, and then my cousin Kim was living with us. So my first album did not look all that great. Second album came out. Kim was the one who researched because we had CD makers back then. And we had the colorful plastic cases. Um, Kim was the one who she researched how to get like a CD design. And then we got a picture that I took of myself and we put that as the album cover art. And then we printed out circular designs to paste onto the CD. We didn't know how to do like the high tech version that they do on CDs, but we printed some paper and glued it onto the CD and it looked so professional. Hold on. The jewel cases. This girl done lost her mind. Hold on. We interrupt this program. This girl done lost her goddamn mind. Girl. She done lost her goddamn mind. Go to your room. She done lost her ever loving mind. Yes, Larry, the jewel cases. <clears throat> she done lost her mind, y'all. She done lost her goddamn mind. She done lost her mind. She done lost her mind. Anyhow, you see how quickly she got off of that damn counter when I saw her? She lost her mind. But anyway, yes, the jewel cases. She made an album insert with my face on it, and she did the pretty text, and she did the, the other side of the insert, 
that had the list of the songs and how and how um let me see and how long each song was so that's how my cousin kim was supported so maybe dad silently and then kirk but since dad told me that i wasn't allowed to go to the studio we had already me and kirk had already been busted for driving without a license like he was teaching me how to drive and then the cop pulled us over and so he probably didn't want to go against my dad again we were some rebels <laughs> and then my cousin kim for helping me with the cd design until she was not allowed to be in the house anymore um she moved out eventually and then yeah i didn't get that was seventh grade eighth grade i continued to make music but i don't think as much that's when we moved to hawaii i got into hula and tahitian dance and a lot of things took my time while I was in Hawaii, actually. Welcome to the Lex Chat, One Harmony in Music. Welcome, welcome. Um, but now as I am an adult, my brother Eldon, he's the one who is supporting me like the most loudly and consistently. So I've had Patreon for a year and a half, almost going on two years now. He's been a patron since the very beginning, $5 a month, every month for just over a year at this point. No one else in my family has. Like, sometimes my mom would try to ask about music, but no one ever really does. So I don't really have anyone in my family who's ever gravitated towards music. There's no one in my family that I know of who tried to make a career out of music so that part's kind of frustrating because I, I don't have anyone in the family that can relate to me on that front. But it's not something I can stay mad at people for because we're all just used to the traditional jobs. And I'm the one that's like breaking the mold, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, I, I think because no one else. Welcome to the Lex Chat. Nanaya W. Marvin or Nanaya Marvin. Welcome to the left chat. Welcome, welcome. But um, so yeah, I, I can't hold that against my family because I'm understanding in that regard. My inner child is just hurt because I didn't get a lot of support that I wanted growing up. Like there's another there's another example in middle school where I was a part of an AVID program, which was like a college prep kind of class. And we had like a, a lunch thing or no, it was a dinner kind of thing. Um, but my, my parents weren't able to come because I think it started at like six o'clock. They didn't get off work till five. I don't know what traffic was like back then, but nobody, nobody came. But I sang a couple of songs for that event. And uh, yeah, so there are just little memories like that that stick out to my head and just made me believe that nobody ever really cared about the music. But as I was saying, everyone in the family worked regular jobs. There's no one that I know of in the family that has ever made a career out of music. So I think I would be the first one, or at least nobody's telling me, but I think I'd be the first one who's, you know, choosing to make a career out of music. Um, so maybe they don't know the questions to ask or they don't know how to support, but it's weird because when I compare them to my brother, he understands streaming he under or even radio or he understands youtube or he understands coming out to a show like do you know how awesome that is and i wish i could i probably need to have this talk with my family and i will eventually one day but even my decision to move out to atlanta by myself i had to be selfish for a while um in that I came out here to get a degree in audio production. Part of me being selfish is, as a broke college student, I don't have money to come visit anybody. And I'm, any extra money that I did make was going towards my music because this is what I believe in and this is what I'm choosing to invest my money into. I don't have money to spend on going out of town or going out of state to visit anybody. Welcome to the Lex Chat who robbing me welcome to the lex chat welcome welcome i think that's your name um but yeah as a broke college student i'm not spending money 
because if I if I miss out on work hours, then I'm missing out on money to pay the bills that and I got GI stipend, GI living stipend for a while, but that ran out like two, three months before I graduated. And I actually went into a lot of credit card debt because I was not making the money I needed to make to sustain myself. <laughs> Don't know how I made it, child, but I'm thankful. Um, but yeah, like there, there's a lot of sacrifices I made um, selfishly, but I think understandably the school aspect, I was not on traditional school time. We didn't have semesters, we had quarters. So you go to school for nine to 12 weeks, you get a week or two for a break, and then you go right back to school. Um, and it's an accelerated program. So we're learning quickly and just don't, you're not moving at a pace like regular school. And then I don't have the money to like spend on gas to go out of town. But somehow we partied a few times a week, but that was for free. We figured out all of the next, whatever that. But yeah, so yeah, going to school, learning to do that. And then I'm not visiting anybody because I got tunnel vision. I'm interning at different studios and going to school and working a job four or five days out of the week. Honestly, I don't know how I did it. I just, I just did it. I don't know how, I just, I just did it. And um, part of me misses that hustle from myself, right? But I was mentioning, you know, the support systems that I had back during those times and kind of like recounting those experiences with people in my family who did support me. Um, because I have a mantra, I have an affirmation on my wall that I tell myself I have support knowingly and unknowingly. And I unknowingly had support, heavy support from my brother this whole time. And I guess I just wasn't paying attention or, you know, I don't know how to explain it. Like I'm grateful for his support, but I guess I allowed my disappointment in the rest of the family or other key people in the family not supporting me in a way that I wanted to see. I let that get in the way of me appreciating the support from someone that I do have supporting me. But I'm just very happy. So there's the culmination of, you know, I have this mindset shift. I have this perspective that I have finally locked in on as far as doing all the shows and being grateful for all the shows that I have and grateful for how it's preparing me for a bigger stage. And then to have the affirmation of family coming from so far just to see me perform at a show. At, a, at one of these small little shows that was not sold very well. It was a very big venue, um, but there were not a lot of people. <laughs> but it is a step up as far as the presentation in the venue that I am presenting at and the outfits that I'm wearing, the look that I'm giving. It's just... It's just very cool. I'm very thankful that I have the support. So the second phase, right? So first was that perspective shift or bringing things into perspective and then having my brother come out to see me, that adds another layer of affirmation. Um, and it's, so my brother came, but then also one of my friends came. And like I said earlier, I have been, I have been promoting this thing for, at least six weeks <laughs> and I'm just thankful because Mr. Flat Shows was there. Uh, my friend Azariah came out and him and Azariah, <laughs> they've got a poster. They got um, the winner hats that I'm selling. Azariah got one of them. They got wristbands, they got um, lighters. And so that was really dope. Of course, my brother got a poster because he's a patron. Patrons get the poster for free. So if you're not a patron, you could have saved money by doing that. Um, and also, welcome to the Lex chat, y'all. HL Black Jack, welcome to the Lex chat. Mr. Flash Shows, welcome, welcome. Dirty Snares, welcome to the Lex chat. Welcome, welcome. Um, so I think what has happened for me with that show even though i didn't have a lot of people show up i am appreciative for the people who did show up i'm glad i had anybody show up for me at all honestly <laughs> so um it just makes me feel really good to have that perspective 
shifted to have those things put into perspective of I need to appreciate all the shows now there is a perspective shift of I need to appreciate when anybody comes out to see me in person and now we're gonna get on to the next point of this whole Lex chat is getting better welcome to the Lex welcome to the Lex chat ex nihilo welcome welcome ex nihilo welcome welcome Sunday dinner, it's looking like turkey burgers, depending on what people say. It's looking like turkey burgers. And it's looking like a late Sunday dinner. I meant to do this, get ready for it like an hour or two ago, but I fell asleep on the couch. Yesterday was kind of a long day. So I, I just dedicated today to resting kind of. But yeah, so the putting things into perspective when it comes to the shows, putting things into perspective when it comes to the support Welcome to the Lex Chat, 21guns.kev. Welcome, welcome. So I had people show up that I was not expecting to show up to the show. And that is the part that gets me. That is the part that gets me. Welcome to the Lex Chat, Brian Blizzak. Welcome, welcome. So let me take y'all on a short tour in my house. I have these affirmations hanging up on the wall in my kitchen. Oh, I didn't mean to change my eyes. And I wrote these maybe two, three months ago. The part that I want to point out on here, where is it? Maybe I should just read it and then it'll come to me. I am surrounded by genuine love to even be like, da, 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 da. where is it? Oh, it's the very first one. Oh my God. Reading is fundamental. So the very first thing, I have unlimited support knowingly and knowingly. That is the very first sentence. And this unknowingly part, that's the part that I want to harp on today. Because I really needed a shift. I really needed a perspective change when it came to who I was expecting to come support me who I was expecting to come be excited about coming to my shows or buying merchandise. And it's, I'm learning not to expect things. Expect the unexpected, which is so cliche. And I actually don't like saying that, but yeah, expect the unexpected. I expect that I will receive support but I will no longer expect it of certain people. And I've kind of gone through a cleanse in the past year as well. Even with friends and people who I feel like are not actively supporting me. People who I want to support me. And I'm, I'm not even sorry about this, but I want to be able to call People who I call friends, welcome to the Lex chat, Mama Tika, welcome, welcome. People who I call friends, I want them to be the people who show up for me. So there's just a, I'm bringing a lot of things into perspective. Just in the past month alone, right? I'm very much okay doing things by myself, um, expecting support but no longer expecting it from certain people, from particular people. Um, I just know that it will be there. And I, I'm, I'm needing to understand that it's, it's going to come. I just need not worry about how it's going to come, where it's going to come from, how much it's going to come from. Because I've gotten more support from people that have only known me a few, a, a, a little short while, with the exception of my brother. I'm getting more support from strangers than a lot of people in my family, or I'm getting more support from strangers than people who I went to school with or people who do the same thing as me and I would call them my friend, right? It's a very interesting thing that's happening. Um, strangers have sent me money. People who I have not known all my life, they send me money and support of, hey, you know, I like what you're doing. I think you're dope. I want you to keep going. And I don't think y'all understand how much that really helps me to keep going. It really does. 
because I've spent where it's going to be next year. It will have been 10 years that I have been dedicating and investing to music. And it's just really heartwarming to know that I have support and it's coming from places I would have never expected. And I am so grateful. So I'm grateful for the, for putting things into perspective when it comes to the shows that I'm engaging in. I'm grateful for putting things into perspective when it comes to the people who support me. And now I find that I'm able to sit back a little bit and enjoy the shows more when I'm not worried about who's coming or who's not coming. When I'm, I'm giving myself permission to get out of my head on a lot of things. And it feels really great to be able to do that because now, and even with the music, people ask me to experiment with rapping. And these are people who pay attention to my content. And I'm like, you know what? Let me give energy to people who are giving me energy. Let's feed each other back and forth. So <laughs> people who I know engage with my content, they're giving me suggestions on content. I'm going to start doing the content that they're asking me for because they're paying attention and I want to give them, you know, what they said they want to see. So with the example of experimenting with rapping, I started doing a rap song, the rap stuff, and I discovered a whole new part of myself, putting things into perspective. And yeah, I can, I can actually rap. Um, the next thing I got to put into perspective, I got to stop calling myself a singer. I need to just call myself an artist because yes, I can sing and I can rap. I do a lot. I do a lot. I can do both. I can do it all. I do it all. Claim it. Okay. Claim that shit. But anyway, um, Sean says you can rap, you can act. Yes. I sing, I rap. I'm an audio engineer. I write all my own stuff. Um, I can act. I model. I work out. I can cook, damn it. I'm a fully functioning, well-rounded woman. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a well-rounded artist. Um, I could produce if I wanted to. I just got to stop being lazy about it. So I could be a producer. I, I vocally produce. I can teach people how to sing. I can play the piano. I, I just do a lot. But yeah, excuse me. Looking for that movie you're, still, you're in still. Yeah, um, I was just informed. So thank you for bringing that up. I was just informed. The movie is called Fling and it was shot by 2K Films. I played Dasani, the character Dasani. And I'm a new pledge onto some sorority that we made up. This is the hand motion that we do. <laughs> and that's the sound that we do. Anyway, um, I've just been informed that they are going through Film Hub, filmhub.com. But he's changing some things in the movie because I guess he submitted to them, but he has to change a few things before they'll accept it onto the site or something like that. Filmhub.com, as soon as he puts that up, because that movie is it's like two years old now that we, two years ago that we filmed it. No, like a year actually, but. I can't wait for it to finally come out. Welcome to the Lex Chat, Quinn with the keys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So yeah, that's that's an update on that. Hopefully that will be done in the next month or two. Um, but I've also been doing sound design, like cleaning up audio on short films. So that's another thing to look out for. Um, but yeah, I, I do I do a lot, but do more drive through reels. You are hilarious. <laughs> yes, yes. I definitely will get back into that. Um, and even if you want to like send me some situations or scenarios or topics or something like that, the drive through reels, the uh, the sermons where I'm pretending to be a pastor and I got my got my pastor shades on, past the glasses, past the glasses, passes. Past glasses. Got my past glasses on. I don't know. I was trying to make that sound cool. It didn't come out cool at all. But yeah, so with the with me putting into perspective to just do all the shows and looking at it as this is an opportunity to perform for people. This is an opportunity for me to practice my craft. Because the next level of being an artist is the stage performance part of it, right? 
and by by putting things into perspective like no matter how big or small the show is i need to show up because it's a big deal to me it's a big deal for me especially when people invite me out to perform it's a big deal that i present myself a certain way it's a big deal that i do this as if i am that big artist because what if i don't practice this now when it comes time to be on that bigger scale when it comes time to be on that larger stage if you haven't been practicing you'll freeze up if you haven't been practicing you won't have the skills developed to be able to handle a huge stage you know so it's important at every level you relish in it and you understand how to overcome certain obstacles at every level so when you get to the bigger level you already have a repertoire of things that you know how to handle and it's all the more not necessarily easier but it's not your first rodeo dealing with certain problems Sean says I forgot your modeling yes I'm getting back into modeling um I let a scam take me out of modeling for a long time I was scammed while I was in school speaking of being a broke college student I invested $800 into a modeling agency um which was actually legit up until they tried to promise to put us into uh spreads of XXL magazine <sighs> you cannot guarantee anybody a placement in a magazine so that was the only part that was like scammy but i got my hair my makeup done i got to try on cute outfits and dresses and things it was very real but they did not give us any of our pictures and then the lady disappeared the lady who took all of our money she disappeared and i had nothing to show for that time period in my life that scarred me from modeling for a little bit but then i got back into modeling by way of being a brand ambassador for clothing um most notably Ace Dollhouse when I was doing that. I think I'm going to get back into doing that as well. Um I'm going to do a fashion haul. The store is called Akira, which is actually where I got my outfit for the Believe Music Hall performance. But yes, so I'm going to get into wrapping this up a little bit. Um thank you for that content suggestion by the way, Sean, of doing more drive-through videos. I'm definitely definitely need to look into that and since like that's another perspective thing too like putting things into perspective appreciating all the shows i get and then appreciating the support that i get because that to me is a form of support someone who's paying attention to my content and letting me know hey i saw this or i listened to that i would love if you would do more of that that to me shows support and it's helping me to come up with content it's helping me to come up with ideas that i may not have otherwise come up with so i really do appreciate that and now the next step for me since i have those things put into perspective and i can enjoy doing the shows a lot more because i have things straight in my mind now i can focus on the things that are going to matter i know i'm going to get support i don't know from who but whoever is supporting me I want to make sure when they come out to support me, I'm giving them something worthy and something of quality to support. So now I can get into bettering myself. So now that I'm getting on these bigger stages and I'm doing more shows, I'm challenging myself to get out of my shell. I am the voice is there, but now it needs to get better as far as singing and moving with like some vigorous movements. And also you said exercise, Lexi. Ah, I'm gaining weight. I still exercise. I actually have my certification as a certified personal trainer and nutritionist now. I just haven't put that into action yet as far as applying it. Welcome to the Lex Chat Chow MC. Welcome, welcome. So yeah, now that I'm able to I have a clearer perspective on those things, I can enjoy the process of becoming a better artist because certain things are just feeling better now. So like the other day, yesterday was the other day. Yesterday was the other day. I was in my living room and I'm thinking to myself, I want to dance more, but I I'm not able to necessarily budget-wise, I'm not able to afford a choreographer, a consistent choreographer, right? Same thing with the clothes. I'm I really want to support my friend, but it's really pricey to book her as a stylist and i don't get to keep those clothes after i book her as a stylist so i figure you know what i can just go to this store that kind of has the same style that she be styling me in but the clothes are like 60 75% cheaper 
And that clothing store is called Akira. It's in the Cumberland Mall. And they have the flashy statement pieces that I want to wear when I go to perform at these different events. So I actually went shopping there the other day, but you know, I'm just trying to be creative with how I spend my budget. Um, and going back to, I don't necessarily have the budget to maintain a consistent choreographer. I decided, you know what, let me get back to my inner child. And what I used to do as a kid before I made it like totally public that I was a singer, I used to in elementary school, Cheetah Girls was a huge thing. My friends and I would, they would come to my house and we would use the driveway as our stage. I would sense, I would stand center stage and then there were two of us on the sides. We would rotate sometimes. And if there were four of us, it would be two of us center stage, but like staggered and then two on the sides. Very Destiny's Child, very Cheetah Girls, but we would learn the routines to the Cheetah Girls and then we would perform them at the ends of the driveway. And I got back to my inner child yesterday by, so, okay, in my set for the Believe Music Hall performance, I added a couple of well-known songs to help transition to my music that I was presenting. So I went from Drop Top to Party by Beyonce, to Captain Hook by Megan Thee Stallion, into the rap song All Keeps by Lexi. Because All Keeps and Megan Thee Stallion, that song All Keeps gives very much Megan Thee Stallion. We both from Texas, so that ain't no surprise there. But I don't, because I don't necessarily have the budget for the uh, you know choreographer, I decided I can channel my inner child and I can look up choreography videos that already exist for these popular songs and I can practice these movements. Either I can learn the choreography in those videos or I can break down certain movements that they're doing in certain steps. And I can just, what I started doing was filming myself doing those movements and just reviewing, it's like reviewing a play if I were an athlete, right? You play a game, maybe the coach recorded it, you go back and you look at the plays and you critique how you did. That's what I did for the show from Savannah. That's what I did looking back at the performance from the Believe Music Hall. And I'm just like, okay, I was moving, but these movements could be cleaner. They could be better. They could be better moves. So I don't have the choreographer. Let me get creative. YouTube is free. I've learned so many things from YouTube. And I'm, I'm hoping that people have learned so many things from my YouTube. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's go to YouTube. And Captain Hook by Megan Thee Stallion is a popular song. Let's look up some choreography videos. I like the choreography they're doing in this video. Let me spend 15, 20 minutes just doing these movements and recording myself from different angles, seeing how I look. And what I actually found out about myself, because I did this before, but what I found out is that I look good doing these movements. I have to work on another perspective, knowing that I look good doing these movements. Chow MC says, I used to live right up the street from Cumberland. Very cool. Oh, I didn't know that. You can find dance movies on YouTube and put your own choreography together. And yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Welcome to the Lex Chat, live and let be. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sean says, exactly in agreement with what I'm saying and what Child MC is saying. So yeah, um, and it's very much what I used to do as a kid. Cheetah Girls, I had this VHS of, well, it was a DVD that I recorded onto a VHS for some reason, because I thought it was cool to record things onto VHS tapes. Um, but yeah, I had the Aaliyah DVD. Um, was it the one in a million? It, more than a woman. It was like a pink flowery design, Aaliyah's album. I have it in a box somewhere, but I had the DVD and on that DVD, she has the music videos for One in a Million, We Need a Resolution, More Than a Woman, Gotta Give It Up, that Marvin Gaye remake, um, Rock the Boat. And then there's like some uh, vlog type stuff of them traveling around. But those, oh, Try Again was on there. Try Again was on there. Are You That Somebody was on there. And I would sit for hours and learn the choreography to Aliyah's songs. And I would learn choreography to Cheetah Girl stuff. So that was me getting back to 
my inner child. <laughs> and I'm starting to realize more and more that a lot of the things we do or a lot of the things that make us happy as adults, it's really just pleasing our inner child and getting back to things that just made us happy. Simple things, but things that made us happy nonetheless. So that's... <laughs> We're going to we're going to wrap up the Lex chat on that note. And um, I'm going to attempt to have this released tomorrow, 8 a.m. in the morning. Um, <laughs> I would very much like to have it released on time. I should have recorded this Wednesday or Thursday, but here we are. I had the show on Thursday and then family came in Wednesday. So, you know, Anywho, Yeah, I just thank you all so much for tuning in to um, this week's lex chat which was about you know putting things into perspective unexpected support and getting better and changing mindsets and i hope y'all got inspired from some of the things i was talking about and it's just i'm i'm excited about certain things artistically again um i was in a dark cloud from december from just about my birthday until maybe like a month ago, I finally started coming out of the dark cloud. And part of being in that cloud was me feeling as though, welcome to the Lex chat, baby Tito, welcome, welcome. Part of me being in that cloud was me feeling as though I'm doing so many things as an artist, but I'm still not progressing, or I feel like I can be doing better in certain things, but I'm not necessarily you know, moving forward or just, just feeling stuck or feeling not as excited about certain processes of being an artist. But now with certain shifts in perspective and putting things into perspective, I feel a kind of weight lifted off of me where I know things will be challenging, but now I can enjoy the challenges. Now I can enjoy everything on every level because I just need to be, I just want to feel grateful for it. I want to love the process. And that's really what we need to get into. We need to fall in love with the process of how things are done and the journey of how things are done. Nipsey Hussle had it right. We need to learn to enjoy the marathon. And even though it feels like you're moving slow, you're not moving slow. You're doing just fine. As long as you are making steady progress and you are keeping your mindset and you're keeping proper perspective on the things that you're doing, you're doing great. Daily deposits add up to big banks. And that's a new model that I've added. I've always been saying the daily deposit thing, but I recently added that part on there because I think it's cute. Daily deposits add up to big bank accounts, but you can't get the big bank unless you make a daily deposit. Even if that deposit is one cent, a penny for your thoughts you are a step closer to the big breakthrough but you got to keep depositing you got to keep investing and that's what today's lex chat was all about so i really hope it helped y'all um thank you for everyone who tuned in live um if you are watching this on youtube make sure you give me a big thumbs up like the video subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each and every time i post a new piece of content Sean's already let me know he wants to see more drive-through parodies, so I'm going to do that. Um, I also need to get back into doing the acapella singing videos. I need to actually start singing more. I want to start singing more again on my YouTube, so I'm going to get into that. But let me know what kind of content y'all want to see more of from me. Um, and I also, oh my goodness, I forgot to say at the beginning of this, but I'm gonna say it here. I do have a couple of shows coming up, a few shows actually. I will be performing with Mark Dub at Sound Extreme Studios in Atlanta, Georgia. We have a song together called Fall Through, which I'm featured on the hook. That is going to be on Thursday, May 26th at eight o'clock. Um, you can check the link in my bio that's going to take you to my Bands in Town page where you can see all of my tour dates listed in a nice, neat, professional-looking way. And then the next day on May 27th, that's a Friday, I will be performing at Club Bank Head in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so meet me at the club. It's going to be a lounge-type situation. It's going to be really dope. I'm going to be looking cute. I need to do like a fashion haul of the outfits that I have picked out for those things. I went shopping at Akira, which is the store in the mall I was telling you about. So that show is going to be starting at 8 o'clock. Be there or be square. 
information to that show, those two shows, um, you can check the link in my bio or you can go to my website, www.lexiatl.com for information and ticket information on the shows coming up. I will also be walking in a fashion show on June 5th, which is a Sunday. That's going to be from three to five. I'm going to be putting that onto my tour dates very soon as well. I just haven't quite gotten ticket information for that. So waiting for that information, but keep those dates, save those dates on your calendar. May 26th, May 27th, June 5th, two shows and a fashion show if you're into those things. And yes, thank you very much. Lastly, before we get off of here, if you enjoy this kind of content, if you enjoy these chats, and you enjoy the inspirational stuff and the tutorials that I've put out on YouTube and other platforms, please consider going the extra mile to becoming a supporter. And that extra mile would be becoming a patron of mine for as little as $5 a month. You can become a patron and you'll get things such as uncut Lex Chat episodes, which can equal twice the content as the general public. They also, as a patron, you get access to behind the scenes stuff and, um, other pieces of content that the general public either doesn't see or won't see for months on end sometimes. So with the YouTube videos, especially like the vlogs, um, patrons will see that as soon as I upload it. Whereas the general public, you only see new episodes once a week when I'm posting those things. So if that's something you're interested in, as well as discounts on merchandise, and I'm working on doing discounts for ticket purchases as well, if you are a patron, then please consider that extra mile of support by going to patreon.com slash LexiATL to become a patron of mine for as little as $5 a month. Please consider becoming a patron of mine at patreon.com slash LexiATL.com. But patreon.com slash LexiATL, sorry. Or you can visit my website, LexiATL.com. But thank y'all so much for joining me today. Ah, and last, last thing, I promise, I promise. All of my merchandise is finally in We've got the winter keeper wristbands. We've got the winter sun visors. It's summertime, it's hot outside. Protect your face, shield your face from the sun with the winter visor. I've got sexy Lexi posters. I've got artist Lexi posters. And what I am most excited about right now, I have burn lighters. Yes, it's a lighter with a built-in bottle opener. So if you smoking, if you drinking, Lexi got you covered. You can light up and you can pop bottles with the lighter so lighters are three dollars wristbands are two dollars posters are ten dollars sun visors are fifteen dollars they're cheaper when you come to the shows and buy from me in person but you can order on my website as well and i will ship them to you there is shipping and handling fees there are shipping and handling handling fees but that was the last thing on my you know rundown of things uh that i'm advertising thank y'all so much for tuning into lex chat Leave your comments below on YouTube to join the conversation. But join me next week on Lex Chat. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to y'all soon. Until next time, my name is Lexi. Peace.